from an early age, I realized I was interested in being a doctor and was quite driven toward it. Now, I had the wonderful opportunity to go to great schools. I had great parent support. Um, I went to schools that were academically enriched. They really captured my attention. I had the opportunity to be involved in a whole bunch of things. So my hyperactivity was being on swim team. You know, I, I'm 5'7", which is short. But when you're like 12 or 13 and you're 5'7", you're the second tallest guy. So I had a brief basketball career, but that ended very quickly. Um, and uh, I was very mediocre, but I was tall for grade 7. And then um, stopped growing. But, uh, you know swim team. I was on debating and model United Nations and school newspaper. Like I used my hyperactivity for good things because I was in a great school that captured my attention. And, you know, I had a love of learning and a strong desire to become a doctor from a young age. Partially, I think that was parent prompting. Partially, it was my own interest of enjoying sciences and wanting to help people. Um, And I think it, you know, I had a tremendous ability to hyper focus when I needed to. So I'd sort of be the student who would goof off during the semester. Like in high school, you could sort of catch up on a weekend. You know, in my undergrad, I could catch up in a week or two. In medical school, it's bloody six or eight weeks. So why was I goofing off for six weeks of the semester to spend like eight weeks catching up? I don't know. Undiagnosed ADHD, right? But I think if I didn't have the support and opportunities I did, I may have been the kid who was the bright guy sitting at the back of the class in high school angry at the world, smart enough to be getting A's, but doing terribly and getting into a whole world of trouble, right? So I had tremendous support and opportunity. I think if I didn't know I wanted to be a doctor, I would have struggled, but I had a goal to work toward that meant a lot to me. I had great educational support and other things. So, you know, educationally and then professionally, I did well, but it was the other parts of my life that were my ADHD was much more evident. I mean, looking back now, um, you know, we would realize I actually had, obviously I had ADHD the whole time, but there were clear symptoms of it. But the understanding of ADHD in the late 80s, 90s was not such that we would have realized that a bright kid who was getting good marks and honors actually had inattentive ADHD. Um, Hmm. I actually got sent to a child psychiatrist when I was 15 by my parents. Um, I love them now. They were ama- they're amazing. They were tremendously supportive. But in my middle adolescence, I hated them with a passion and I was so defiant to them. So it would drive them insane because I was getting great marks and everybody thought I was great, but I made their lives miserable, right? Uh, so they sent me to an adolescent psychiatrist who I saw for six, seven, eight times. And he basically said to my parents, you know, don't worry too much about him. Give him some time. He's angry at the world, et cetera. Um, you know, but at the time he didn't diagnose ADHD, right? Like I was getting work done. I was getting great marks at a challenging school. So yeah, I mean, I consider myself very fortunate, um, as life got busier, work got busier, family, it started to be too hard to juggle all the balls and manage everything. And I realized I should get an assessment. And the irony was my book on ADHD had just come out like a month before I got diagnosed. And then I got diagnosed. And then like many people with any kind of mental health diagnosis, um, I became really ashamed, right? Like somebody said to me, hold on a second. You just wrote a book about ADHD and you're supposedly an expert, but you didn't even realize you had it. What kind of expert are you? And I was like, oh my God, you know, this is terrible. How is like, how embarrassing. I feel so ashamed. (laughs) 